Hi, everybody. This is David Skarika. So today in our legendary trade uh, our series, we're looking at Jim Ch Chanos uh, um, shorting Enron in 2001. And this is kind of what made Chanos maybe the most legendary short seller uh, in Wall Street. I read an excellent article which deal to in 2015, 2016, I was convinced that the market was going to crash. Now, we did see the largest correction in nearly four years in 2015, but there was no crash. But I did very well in a lot of shorts. And then I uh, I kind of got out of them in 2016 when I kind of saw the market was going um, against me. And then, you know, I've shorted on and on, uh, on and off, sorry, since then. But shorting is very difficult. I don't, I, Chanos says, I have a lot of respect for him because to be, to doing that for, you know, 40 years, it's, it, it took a big toll on me uh, in 2022. I, I was very bearish in the markets because of the federal reserve raising interest rates. And by the end of the year, I was kind of a mess. <laughs> it's stressed out. So I can totally understand, uh, you know, how difficult it is. You know, stocks can only go to zero. They can only go down a hundred percent. Of course you can leverage that a bit with margin or I uh, put options, but, you know, and, and of course the markets go up over, uh, over time, although most companies do not, as Chanos has often explained. So he talked about uh, how he got into shorting in the early eighties. And, you know, remember he's basically was the largest short seller, most famous short seller during a huge secular bull market, you know, into 2000. And then again, in the 2010s and, you know, basically produced positive annual returns, which is amazing. Again, Considering when he started, the Dow was probably under two thousand, and you know now it's almost forty thousand. And he recently shut down his fund. He said, and I've seen this in the in uh, the stock recommendation newsletter business, stating that people don't really want to look at fundamentals. You know, I tend to be, I do a, a, a mixture of kind of venture capital and deep value investing. So I totally understand where um, Jim's, because I, I see that myself. When I recommend a little small cap stock that's trading at half time revenue and growing at 20%, I can tell people don't care. You know, they just want to chase Tesla or or uh, NVIDIA or Microsoft or whatever it may be. So anyhow, to get to his Enron trade. So essentially there was a, an article in the Wall Street um, uh, a journal and, um, Right here, uh, that it, it looks it, they they kind of explain some of the question marks because basically, as everything was kind of in the midst of the dot com bubble, the they I'm trying to explain this as simple as possible. They loosened a lot of uh, the accounting rules where a lot of these companies could you know book these like these trading gains or these kind of uh, you know it, it was more like accounting the gimmickry or sorry sorry gimmick uh, gimmicks. Uh, as real, you know, gains in in uh, 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 the company. Like, let me give you one example of what Enron was doing. If they say book, bought a power plant in India and they said, okay, this power plant is going to produce this much profit over the next 10 years, like annualized would be this per year, per 10 years. They would book that entire 10 year uh, profit on the books now. So they were having this huge, uh, um, you know, expansion and kind of like their book value and profits, but their real annualized profits of their real business were only growing at about 6% uh, a year, uh, returning 6% a year. So channels kind of saw like this is overvalued. The real core of the business is, 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 is not really growing. And of course they were using all of these complex accounting, uh, again, games going through Cayman Island companies and all of this sort of thing to kind of, again, book profits, et cetera. So it was it was a combination of of a fraud of this new accounting rule, and it was like kind of accepted because it was like the digital age, and Enron was seen as kind of the you know the digital trading company, and of course there was all the all the stories we know about you know Enron basically uh, helping to cause blackouts in California because of their trading desk essentially spiking uh, the cost of energy, et cetera, et cetera. So that. Is, is is some of it in the nutshell, and of course these some other companies were doing it as well. Jim talks about it uh, um, uh, 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 in detail in this interview, and uh, so then uh, there in March of 2021, all these articles started coming on asking if Enron was overpriced, was it overvalued, and it kind of the tide began to turn. And I'll I'll show you um, the Enron stock chart here, which we can see um, um, the, it peaked right there. In 2021, kind of interesting enough, it peaked a, a year after the Nasdaq peak, and you can see it really spent 
the first you know, seven to eight months of 20, uh, or sorry, sorry uh, from 2000 to um, mid 2021, they took, uh, so about a 15 month period topping out and then rolled over and essentially went to zero. Uh, the, the, uh, the end of it was when they had to do this big one-time non-recurring loss uh, uh, and, you know, off the, uh, on the balance sheet uh, late in the, uh, the, the third quarter of 2021. Or, or, sorry, or 2001. So uh, Enron essentially, you know, then was exposed. And, uh, you know, that, that summer, this is another chart of the Enron stock price where we can see, you know, basically it topped, I mean, you know, doing some technical work between 60 and $90 a share before rolling over and going to zero. And, you know, if you did trade at short, this is purely on technicals, you probably would have shorted when it broke about 60 because that was the support level. And Chano said that he continued to short the stock all the way down because the news got worse and worse. One of the worst pieces of news um, was, uh, of course, uh, uh, Jeff Skilling, uh, you know, uh, 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 quitting in um in the summer after only six months on the job he'd infamously uh, uh swore at uh, an analyst who asked him a tough question uh just uh, a, a few uh, months earlier etc cetera, etc cetera. and um you know then he quit then because i think he knew it was about as good as it was going to get and then uh, in october there were more uh you know uh, uh stories about Enron, even though the stock price was slumping and you think the insiders would be buying, they were all dumping the stock. So, you know, and then Dynagy, uh, that was actually uh, a, a similar company to Enron that was basically across the street in Houston, was, was was talked about buying Enron to kind of prop them up. But again, with all these balance sheet problems that both companies had, by the way, uh, Dynagy, of course, not being a severe, uh, that never really happened. And you can see Dynagy, uh, <laughs> what happened to its stock as well. You know, totally collapsing as well. Uh, you know, it, it from two thousand to two thousand two. So that was essentially what made um, the channels famous. He was one of the big short sellers they got on uh, top of that. Uh, and you know, I think he had a feeling that also it was a fraudulent company. Uh, Jim can always correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, actually, a friend of mine down the street who used to live in New York City and did charity work did charity work. Uh, 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 with him or or my friend's sister did charity work with him, I should say, um, uh, with, with Jim as well. So, um, yeah, so this basically talks about it and just kind of like um, the, the uh, uh, Jim talks about how there's still a lot of fraud in the market today, obviously, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, there you go. Uh, uh, you know, one of the great tr short trades of all time. It made Jim famous. It made his fun grow like crazy. And of course, now, as he said, there's no one introduced uh, in, um interest in fundamentals but there is one uh chart i'd like to do and i don't know some of you might get upset with this so again we look at this enron chart that topping pattern here the big huge run up and then the move lower and i just think that um from a technical standpoint i see some similarities in tesla now tesla you know we all know has some accounting issues etc cetera, etc cetera. they've been talked about at length uh, we're seeing a big slowdown in the EV market. That's why Tesla has not participated in the magnificent uh, seven rally in you know in really the past six months or so. And you know it's nowhere near its all time highs. Whereas you know Microsoft, Nvidia, et cetera, have been have been uh, um, uh, blowing out. So uh, uh, you know blow, blowing out to new uh, highs. So this is a st there's a documentary that everyone knows called The Smartest Guys in the Room. And it's about Enron. It's it's you know it talks to former employees there, et cetera, et cetera. But what I thought I'm gonna post along with the interview with Jim is this thing called the Crooked E. So it's it's a kind of a cheaply made TV movie, and it's actually shot in winter. Uh, I call it Winter Pigs. I'm Canadian uh, in Winnipeg. Uh, 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 so it's it's shot there because Winnipeg is kind of flat like Houston. Uh, so. So, but anyway, it kind of tells the story. It talks about some of those uh, shenanigans they were doing in insurance, in the earnings, like I discussed. And it does it in a very simple way. Uh, some of the movie is very funny. They talk about like, you know, Enron would just hire ex playmates, strippers, et cetera. Like there was all these like gorgeous, you know, you know, blonde, buxom women in, in uh, working in their office with basically like, uh, nothing jobs <laughs> and the wild parties they would throw, et cetera, et cetera. You know, they really monetize their, um, you know, their, um, their bonus scheme for people to be aggressive, et cetera, et cetera. So it was really like a real story 
of 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 greed. And of course, um, um, uh, the the CEO, uh, he he passed away pretty early, uh, pretty young in the '60s. And he was also um, a good friend of uh, Bush, or or very closely uh, um, related to, or you know, in with the the Bush, uh, um, uh, you know, regime in the early two thousands. No, Jeff Lay, no, or sorry, sorry, uh, Kenneth Lay, Kenneth Lay is Jeff Skilling, Kenneth Lay. So anyhow, th this movie is worth watching. I, I, one reason I like putting these trade, uh, these legendary trade series out on a Friday. If you got nothing to do on a weekend, especially with no football right now, you can kind of spend an hour or two on a Saturday or Sunday if you're having a lazy day and watch something like this. So I hope you enjoyed this. This is how Jim Jim Chanos kind of became the most the most uh, famous short seller on Wall Street. Uh, how he shorted Enron, et cetera, et cetera. I also recommend the smartest guys in the room, but for our purposes, I'm going to put this movie because you know you can see this movie. It's got okay views, uh, nearly a million, but it's not like oh you know that well known. And I, I watched it the other day. I found it pretty entertaining. Actually, and there's some there's some pretty famous uh, actors. The guy actually plays Kenneth. Like he, I can't remember. He's one of the he's one of the care. He's one of the guys who's one of the characters in Mash. Uh, so anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, and this this will be uh, shown on Friday on the website. And everybody, take care. Have a great weekend. I'll see if I'm going to do a stock chart of the day on Sunday uh, because you know I think this one was a lot to take in. Uh, take care. Bye.